In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that, he that, my friend, the whole kingdom of God operates on only one thing. Believe. Believing what? What you can see or what God has declared in his word which you can't see. Ah. So you see, he that believes on me, as the scripture said, out of his belly shall flow. So when you get born again, you get the well. But when you start using the water from the well for yourself, there comes a time that well turns into a river. And river cannot be stopped, it crosses boundaries. Yes. So when I got born again, my life got changed and I began to study the word of God, there came a time I started with the well which first delivered me. And the moment I got delivered, I could not keep my mouth shut because that well was overflowing and it turned into a river and that's why all the way from India, the river is flowing in yeah. Australia. is going to depend on how much how much of the scriptures can you understand believe and keep on drawing the water from the valley yesterday we saw that lady come on a wheelchair yes yesterday night before we could go to night region my brother can you lift your hand up he's the one who brought the sister god bless you for your heart Every moment that he has spare time, he will go to the home for the aged. He will go to the sick. And he saw with his eyes, not me. Can you just stand up? This baby, for the first time, laying hands on the sister who can't see. The sister who has got deaf ears. A sister who has got 30 years of arthritis and she gets healed. This brother is thinking, how can that be? My friend, in every body, is the way. Amen. All I have to teach her is the understanding. And when she got that understanding and she made a prayer, she said, my God, and she was crying and crying. And she said, I'm not worthy. How can God do this? I said, none of us are worthy. But praise be to God for his shed blood. Oh. By his blood, we are made worthy. He looked at me and I said, God, this brother has got a heart, but only one thing lacking, under So we made a prayer. And I said, brother, this is how it's going to happen from now on. You saw it, go and use it. Praise God, when we entered the hospital, he got the news that his mother-in-law is seriously ill in the hospital. But he did not leave this couple, he stayed there. And then he went to the hospital. And the mother-in-law was very serious. And he went up to the mother-in-law and said, Mama, I'm going to lay hands on you and I'm going to make a prayer for you. And Mama, you are going to be healed by Jesus. And he laid his hands and he prayed. And he called up to Sister Tanya and said, Hey sister, what happened in the hospital by that Young girl, it's happening through my hands too. My mother-in-law is completely healed. She's come back. Oh, yes, yes. Now we brought that lady here, and we saw that she could only stand and walk a few steps. When he was taking her back home, he said, "Lord, my hands are anointed." Oh. My hands are anointed. And he said, can I lay hands on you, mama? And he laid hands on her. And he called up at night and he said, brother, this lady started walking on her own. Oh. How did this thing take place? By understanding. So, if you have the understanding, if you have the river flowing in you and that river can heal others, can that same river heal your loved ones? Yes. yes. Oh, yeah. Oh. Did you get that? Yes. yes. Oh, 
This was a scripture given to me by a person when I was a baby. I never forgot this scripture. God set it the solitary in families. He brings out those which are bound with chains, but the rebellious dwell in dry land. Please God. God set it. Set it. Set it. Set it. Set it. Set it. I like that word. It's me. Set it. Hallelujah. Now, when this brother explained to me this scripture, he said, Hey brother, you are the one that God has set in your family. And I said, I don't understand. And I began to think, why is God set me? And I began to look into my life on the scripture and I began to ask God, oh, I don't understand the scripture. Because he says, he brings out those which are bound with chains, but the rebellious dwell in dry land. And I began to wonder in my family and I found, praise be to God, among the three children, I, I, among the three children, was the black sheep. <laughs> I was the one who was always on the wrong side. I was the one who could never have anything to do with good people. I would be, I would be really restless when the good people would come to me. Honest, honest. And when I began to look into the scripture, the Lord said, listen, I have set you in your family to bring out every person of your family into the promised land. Amen. My family, we are Catholics, but we are only Sunday Catholics, not me. My brother, my sister. Not me, not me, not me. Praise God. I would go only to please my wife and I would not enter the church because I would say I am young and I can stand that seat somebody else can be. <laughs> and I would love to stand outside because on the outside uh, people who are like me also are outside. outside. It was never for Jesus, but to see different fashions. That was my life. But when I looked at the scripture, he said, I have set you in your family. And I began to look, and then he began to teach me about that word solitary. And he says, just change that into a precious stone. Because I come from diamond tools. I used to manufacture diamond tools. So God will always speak to you uh, according to situations and circumstances. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I have just made a PowerPoint this morning when I got up at 5 o'clock. I was going on the internet and doing this PowerPoint. This is a diamond mine. Can you see how deep it has to be dug? And the Lord spoke to me about 14 years back, 14 and a half years back, that you are my diamond that has been dug deep down by the devil who took you into that deep pit and he nearly finished you. But let me tell you, Everybody said you are in the pit, but my eyes were still fixed on you. <laughs> the diamond is so deep inside that they have to dig and remove tons and millions of tons of earth to get that diamond. Praise God. Praise and when they get that soil, the first thing they do is get a 
heavy pressure of water and they separate the clay mud from the stones with high pressure water and the Lord says do you know when you called out to me I put my hand in that pit and gave you my hand and brought you out and the first thing I did was to wash you clean oh. with my blood and then he said I took you in my hand and when I took you into my hand you were so shameless because when you see a diamond if you see a diamond it is opaque you can't see through it has to be polished so that you can see through so the impurity or the things of the world was so much that the original shine could not come out it was opaque and God had to work on that praise God the first thing the person does is he looks into the diamond by polishing a one portion and he sees through and he sees which part has got a lot of impurity and he makes those markings and after making the markings the first thing he does he takes a blade and with pressure cuts or breaks that portion of the diamond and the first thing the Lord said I am putting markings on you according to my word and all that you learn from the devil the first thing I want to do is break those areas it's going to be painful son but I got to do that because without that the diamond's value will be very low yes, yes. so he started with the chisel work and who helped him this mama she would give me the word and the word is a double-edged sword that began to cut me every time I came for the service and the priest opened his mouth and spoke the word it was cutting it was cutting and I said Lord here I am submitting to you cut me Lord the way you want but I want you because I have stayed in the pit it was miserable it was dead I don't want to go into that pit anymore do you know what kept me away when I was brought I had a demonic problem. Yesterday you saw uh, one lady afflicted. Mm. I was telling my brother Dave, if you increase that by 50 times, that was my condition. Eight to ten people could not stop me. I would throw them down. Don't look with fear. Not <laughs> Hallelujah. So God had to cut me and polish me. And there came a time when this diamond has to be given a shape. Because when you see the diamond, it is shapeless, right? The shape has to be given. And do you know with what it gives a shape? With another sharp diamond. And that's why in the body of Christ, God has kept sharp diamonds to cut you. Mm. In your family, sharp diamonds too cut you. And when the sharp edges cut you, you open your mouth and you start barking. And if you start barking, your shape will be shapeless. <laughs> but if you are hurt and it's painful and everywhere it's hurting, but you keep on saying, Lord, because I love you, I love this person, I forgive this person, I do good to this person, and the devil is screaming, and say, come on, give back. And you say, no, I love Jesus. And to prove my love to Jesus, I'm going to love this person more. <laughs> That's when you start taking shit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Once it is round, you will see different facets and every facet has to be perfect angle with a perfect size 
And please God, every facet will, will leave a sharp edge. And what was those facets? Jealousy, lust, alcohol, adultery, pornography, all those different areas of sin. When, when the Lord begins to deal and polish you, it's, it's, it's going to be a friction with another diamond. With the word of God. And the more and more he polishes you, heat is generated. You don't want to be on that pool. You want to run, but you say, God, I'm ready. Go ahead and polish me. Even if it's hurting, even if it's uncomfortable, I will obey you. Yes. And the more and more you obey, the facet is ready. And when that first facet is ready, it leaves a sharp edge. And now, when you go around and you start rubbing somebody with that sharp edge, his chains are broken. Because, because the diamond is the hardest substance on earth. And when the Spirit of God comes in you, you become the hardest. If the facet is not polished, you are screaming and screaming. There's no sharp edge. And the more and more facets are being polished, the more and more the shine of God's glory. People recognize you from a distance. Hey, God's hand is upon this brother. Hey, God's favor is on this person. Hey, when he opens his mouth, Heaven backs him up. But before all that can happen, the question is, how much of your facet is shining? And that shining comes only through one thing, doer of the word of the heart. Hallelujah. 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 And the Lord began to deal with me. And he said, son, I've chosen you for your family. <coughs> I've set you there. When a person is making a ring, diamond ring, there is a cavity. Oh, I did not do that. And there are some hooks holding on to that. Yeah. That is the word of God holding you and strong. And he said, I have set you there. You know why? Because if I can get you, I can get your fab spouse, I can get your children, I can get your papa, I can get your mama, I can get your brother, I can get your sister. I can get the whole family. And that's why I got you first. But your whole family will come and get change and the chains will break only if your facets are shining <laughs> but if you are praying and if you are praying and you're preaching the gospel but your facets are not shining you are not a doer of the word you are not walking in that unconditional love you are sweating but nothing is happening hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 My sister, I invited her once for a meeting and she came for a night vigil and she was sitting there and during the night vigil uh, I was praying for the youth for the anointing and it was, I don't know what, this side or that side, I don't understand. She was standing just behind the whole line of youth. And I began to pray from the stage. And the fire of God came on that whole line of youth. And there was one at the corner. He went and banged the wall and he fell down and began to roll. My sister saw that for the first time. She was shivering. Okay? In the morning, when I went to meet her, she said, don't even come close to me. I don't want to do anything. And she said these words. 
don't ever call me for any of your meetings, I'm not coming. She did not agree and she was not interested. So I could never speak to her. That incident had put such an effect on, he, on her that he could never speak Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Recently, I got a chance to go to meet her in Qatar. So I went there and I began to talk to her about Mama, about Papa, about everybody but Jesus. <laughs> I began to taste her beautiful food because she, she uh, cooked food just like my mom. And I was enjoying. And three trips I spent only speaking this. But it so happened that one person, look how my God is a master plan. One person, his wife had got healed of deaf ears and he got the news that I am in Qatar. So he came in search of me and he found that his building and my sister's building are neighbors. <laughs> so he got me from my sister's house and took me home and he, uh, I began to share some word of God and he dropped me. And when he was dropping me, I said, bye brother. And he said, no, I want to meet your sister. <laughs> Whenever you take Jesus, Jesus people home, even when they come home, they will talk Jesus, Jesus. And my sister doesn't want to hear Jesus, Jesus. So I tried my best and I said, she's sleeping. He said, doesn't matter, we can take her up. <laughs> I tried my best. And then I said, Baba, listen, you can go home. He said, listen, I just want to introduce myself for five minutes. And I thought to myself, five minutes will not damage anything. So I decided to take him. And I praise God, when you take Jesus, Jesus people home, and they get five minutes, he did not get up for one and a half hour. <laughs> and what do you think he spoke? Jesus. And I am crying and I'm saying, God, why is he doing this? I did not understand. And my sister, I was surprised. She did not want to hear from me, Jesus, but she was saying, then what happened? <laughs> I was happy. He dropped me and after two months, my sister called me and said, my best friend attempted suicide. I want you to pray for God. Praise, Praise be to God. Praise she saved me. And I said, listen, there is one way you, it can happen. With me praying, it won't happen. But you have to do something. Do you love your friend? She said, yes, and I'm ready to do anything. So I said, do one thing. You remember I gave that man my CDs? Because I could not give my sister my CDs. <laughs> so I said, do you remember I gave those CDs to that man? And she said, yeah. Go to his house, pick up that CD, and go to your friend and play. When you will play, she will switch off. Now your test begins now. You have to keep it on for one hour minimum. Will you do it? She said, I will. I said, will you do it every day? She said, I'll do it every day. So I said, go ahead. Praise be to God. After 15 days, she called me and she said, listen, my friend is free from depression. But can you tell me, can I get some more CDs? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, I, and I asked her, what happened? She said, I cannot believe that's my brother. I said, why can't you believe that's your brother? She said, listen. You have lived your life all the time on the wrong side. How can God do this to you? I said, my God doesn't look at what I did in the past. He looks at my heart condition now. She said, when I put the CD for my friend, I was listening and tears were rolling down and I listened to it not one hour but two hours because I wanted my friend to recover quickly. So from office I would come, go to her house, put it on for two hours. After three days I took a copy and gave it to my 
my brother-in-law, that is her husband, and said, we got to listen to it. And now husband and wife are listening together. Ah. Praise God. Praise God. And that's the time the Lord said to me, son, every time you wanted to talk to your sister, but you were not the chosen laborer for your sister. I had somebody else and I could not even think the person who attempted committing suicide was the one who was the chosen laborer for my sister's conversion. Oh my God! And that's why we all the time backfire because we want to go and preach and preach and preach. Listen my friend, if your loved one is unsaved, they don't want to hear Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. They want to hear your gospel of your life. That's right. Now nobody can <laughs> My dad, I'm giving you examples of what I, my dad would not believe. I showed him the video, he said, I don't believe that. I asked my dad, why don't you believe that? He said, when I was a small boy, I had seen holy anointed preach. And I never saw holy anointed preach heal people of blind eyes and deaf ears. And as for you, I know my son better than anybody. <laughs> <laughs> With all your past, do you mean to say, I can believe those things? I still don't believe. Years went by, could never speak Jesus to my father. Never. Because he said, I can't believe it. There came a time when God built this house for us in Goa, where 2,000 people can sit together for a service. And I said, Dad, will you please come to Goa? Because from the time my mom died, my dad, for the last 10 years, has not gone anywhere, whether it's a wedding or anything. He, he had a mindset that when my wife is not there, I will live a life with myself. No more weddings or anything. So after 10 years, I asked Dad, Dad, will you come to that house on the 8th of September, Mother Mary's birthday, we are having our opening. And please God, my dad said, yes. And I started crying. So he said, why are you crying? I said, I'm coming. <laughs> So I said, Dad, I can't believe after 10 years you're coming. So Dad walked in, and when he walked in, different people came and spoke to him. Your son preached, and I got healed of HIV. Your son preached, and I got healed of cancer. And there were so many people catching my dad and speaking. And all that my dad was doing was crying. The service began, and Dad saw with his eyes people getting healed. And now came for the healing time. Praise God. My dad had a problem with his ears for years. When we, I was praying and the queue was going on, I saw my dad in the queue. And, 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 I, and I said, Dad, you are in the queue? He said, I now believe. Will you pray? We both cried, hugging each other. And my God opened my dad's ears. He received Jesus. He began to hear the gospel. He began to listen to the CD. Praise God, before my God, my dad could leave this planet up, he was filled with glory. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you.